Hi, my name's Melanie Coombs and I'm a creative producer. As you can probably hear from my accent, I'm an Australian producer, but I'm also based here in the UK. I do six months in Australia and six months in the UK. I'm best known for producing two uh, anim claymation animations. One was Harvey Crumpet that won the Academy Award in 2004. And I also produced a stop motion animated feature called Mary and Max that opened the Sundance Film Festival in 2009 and has screened in just about every country in the world. So that's very exciting. We had an incredible, you know, the Oscar, I used to always call it, it's like the golden crowbar. So basically, if you have won an Academy Award, then you really get people's attention. And so you get your foot in the door, and then you've got the opportunity. And Mary and Max was financed before the global financial crisis, so that did make, I think, a big difference. If I was trying to finance a project that ambitious and that much of an auteur project, you know, I think it would be very difficult in the current climate. And I think in a funny kind of way, when you don't know what you're doing, you have this kind of like bubble of this brilliantly beautiful, naive confidence. And you just think it'll be made. Like, I'm just gonna make it happen. And you have that energy. And so it's quite infectious, as we all know, like properly genuine enthusiasm. It's exciting and it's exciting to be around. So a lot of persistence, a lot of pushing. Um, you know, I did get high profile cast, voice cast, um, in, during the financing, but not all of them. I didn't get Philip Seymour Hoffman until right at the end. Um, the director, Adam Elliott, and I, um, you know, had, you know, developed everything, written the script, and uh, we decided together that Philip Seymour Hoffman would be the perfect Max, but he said no. And then we tried all these other people, and then we went back again, and we said, what about now? You know, you've got more pictures to show, and he said no. And then right at the very last stages of production, he said yes, bless him. So that was September and we opened Sundance in January. So that was very nerve wracking period towards the end. <music> Interestingly, <clears throat> Harvey Crumpet, which was a short film, basic 26 minutes, and Mary and Max, which was a 80, you know, however many minutes film, took the same amount of time to make because one was made in a super low budget, kind of almost film school style environment, and the other one was made you know, with a crew of you know, between 80 and 100 people. So completely different kinds of experiences, and <clears throat> no one had made a stop motion feature in Australia until that time, and ironically, at that time, another one was being made at the same time, but unfortunately, we were doing it at the same time, so we couldn't actually learn from each other, which is a bit of a shame, but that's just how these things work. So, we had to kind of, you know, basically we found an old factory and we literally built an animation studio in it. And we found animators and everybody. We used the all Australian crew, which had its moments because there were people with lots of experience but they'd always worked alone. Or people with almost no experience but had talent and we sort of were training people as we went as well. Um, the director also wrote and also designed and you know did the storyboard which then became the animatic so he was on set I mean we were both on set all the time but having that kind of complete creating a system that could make him feel like he still had the creative control he was used to back in the days when he used to write it direct it build it shoot it you know all of that so there was a that was the kind of you know as a creative producer that was one of the biggest challenges for me is to actually create a model that actually still made him feel comfortable and still made him feel like it was his story and his voice. And I think anyone who sees Mary and Max and seeing uncle or cousin or brother or Harvey, it's not like, oh, you sold out for your feature. So as a creative producer, I'm incredibly proud of that. I think that's a real achievement. Harvey Crumpet was made um, after I first met Adam Elliott after I saw his little short film Cousin, which was just, I'd never been interested in animation at all. This is shocking news, I know. Animation friends, I'm, you know, I still make live action too now, but anyway. Um, but I just thought it was the most beautiful film I'd ever seen about someone with a disability. And I thought the storytelling was so beautiful and kind of economical and yet honest in a way that I just hadn't seen anyway. So I was like, I want to work with you. So I went up to him and I went, I really want to work with you. I think you're great, but I think you should be doing things for longer and I can help you and I can do this. And he went, ooh, go away, crazy lady. And he literally did. And he went on and made another little tiny four minute short. 
And then after that, he got to know me slightly better in the intervening sort of year or so. And so then when he was ready to do something longer, he came to me and he said, well, I'd like to do something longer and I'd like to do it with you. So that was the beginning of a 10-year creative collaboration between Adam and I, uh, where we had two children, <laughs> Harvey Crumpet, which was literally made in like, you know, you know, shot for 18 months and all of that, and Mary and Max, which then after, you know, and you know, I mean, Harvey was such a blessed project, you know, because, you know, it's one thing to make a great film, it's another thing to win an Academy Award. And that's just like, people say, well, how did you do that? And I'm like, well, I just got lucky. You know, we got lucky. We were so fortunate. It's sort of, you know, I don't know what you could do except run around with a lightning rod in a field. But, you know, that's, you know, that's what happens. And so the most important thing in those kinds of environments is to use the hype. Don't believe it. Never believe your own publicity. You never believe it. But you use it. So literally having had that incredible success. So Harvey, the first time it was ever screened, was at Annecy. It went on to win three, of three out of three prizes. You know, it was just this, and then just snowballed. This crazy snowballing. And then suddenly we're at the Academy Awards. And then we won. Oh, my God. And then... Then we were in this position where everyone in LA was suddenly like terribly interested in us. Fascinated. We suddenly had an agent and a manager. And at that point, Adam really didn't want to do a feature. Like he wanted to do a 13 by five minute series called Urban Eccentrics. And that was what he absolutely wanted to do. And so that's what we said to people. And our agent and manager had organized us all these meetings with the top US animation studios at the time. And when we said we were, that's what we were going to pitch, they all went, oh, you can't do that, you've got to come up with a feature, please don't embarrass us. So literally, to not embarrass our agent and manager, we just came up with an idea. I literally, we were at a friend's place and I put a bottle of wine on the table and I said to Adam, by the time we finish this bottle of wine, we're going to have a pitch. We never have to make it. I never, you know, you don't ever have to do it. Just for the exercise, you know, here we are in crazy Hollywood. Like, let's, let's just do this thing, you know. How much, like, how fun it'll be, you know? So first glass of wine, I don't want to do this, I don't have any ideas, I'm not creative. Second glass of wine, oh well, I do have this pen friend, boom. So by the time the bottle of wine was finished, we had, you know, like honestly, like the back of an envelope pitch for Mary and Max. Then we went and pitched it to all these people and they literally like moonwalked away from us. They literally, they're just like, whoa, you want to do that as a feature? So, but then by the time, and pitching is one of those things that sometimes you fall in love with your pitch. And then we did. But then we had to go back to Australia and make the bloody thing. <laughs> so it was very funny. And you know, Mary and Max cost, you know, probably with all of the marketing grants that we got and all that kind of thing, 400,000 Australian dollars, which is probably at the time was about 300,000 US or, you know, 200,000 pounds, roughly. Um, and Mary and Max cost eight and a quarter million Australian dollars, which at the time was about six million US, so that's about, what, four million pounds. So it was very low budget for a stop frame feature animation. Um, but again, I think this sense of, um, you know, naivety, but also ambition, but like uh, the good kind of ambition, not the nasty kind, um, kind of got us through, you know. But I mean, I absolutely promise you, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, Adam had a lot more of an idea than I did, but we learned and we just um, had the attitude which is we will surround ourselves with, you know, eagles and hopefully they will help us soar, you know. Um, and by learning from your mistakes, not being too proud, you know, I think that pride is actually the enemy of all creative people and I certainly class producers as creative people because we're the ones who in a, at the beginning, we actually kind of curate the ideas, we curate the people, we build the relationships and all the way along we're enthusing people and exciting them and you know all of that and all of that is creative work and it takes creative energy and commitment and heart and that over word used word passion, passionate commitment and all that sort of thing but you know I think that those things are all part and parcel of how those two films got made. It's kind of, for me, that opening scenes in Wally, -E, and I know it's kind of probably everyone goes, oh, another Pixar film, but I think it's just magnificent. I think the fact that there's almost no dialogue makes it almost a kind of really pure form of cinema, and I think it's spectacular. Um, um, in terms of things I saw as, as a kid, I think, you know, and I'm an old lady, um, the little mushroom dancing in Fantasia, 
And that's like, a, you know, I mean, I just think that those sequences in a funny kind of way. Um, one of the things I think about animation is that, you know, with all sort of, sort of cinema or cinematic storytelling, there's a suspension of disbelief. You go, okay, well, they're actors or it's a document, it's been edited or whatever. And you know, so you have to take a leap and then you believe in the story. But with animation, it's also a dancing gloss. And you know that's not even breathing. So I think you have a double leap of faith in it. Which I think then think, this is why I think some people, you know, they say, oh, I hate animation. Because they're not prepared to go that second leap. But then the people who love animation, they love it so much. Like, they love it so much. Like, Harvey Crumper, right, has been screened at someone's wedding. Right? Harvey Crumper has been screened on people's deathbeds. You know, the, story, the way people love that film. And the same with Mary and Max, you know. And because Mary and Max didn't do the big business in the US and didn't have that kind of push behind it, people are discovering the film now. And they're discovering it on iTunes and Netflix and all of that. But people, like, the, the, the way in which they write to you and, and talk about the film, it's like, even though those stories are very personally from Adam, they also kind of don't belong to him or me. Do you know what I mean? That they're, they're kind of they exist and have a life of their own. And I think that that's one of the most extraordinary things about animation and the way in which people engage with it. And also that it doesn't seem to date, particularly if you use traditional te techniques. You know, like sometimes with some software, you can sort of see, oh, that looks a bit old or clunky now, especially because Pixar have just spent another bazillion on doing something extraordinary and magnificent. But certainly with drawn or sand or claymation or anything like that, they, they still feel fresh. And I think that that's just remarkable. Animation's remarkable.